What do I have to pay after receiving my real estate license? What's the fees? What can wait? What can't wait? What's up, beautiful people? If we haven't met yet, my name is Essence Regine. I make content about... If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video with me. If you want to know the fees after your license as an active real estate agent, then keep on watching. Fee number one, your brokerage. So joining a brokerage requires startup costs. For example, with my current brokerage, the startup cost fee for me was $149. And that 149 included the CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool. And it pretty much houses all of your contacts. It keeps up to date on when you may need to reach back out to them, if you need to reach back out to them. Um, the system is called KV Course. Brokerage was the EXP. You would be paying around $250 to $499 per month for this same software. So, also that 149 includes um, your first 1000 business card. Fee number two. So your association, Board of Realtors, National Association of Realtors, this fee depends on two things. So your location and the time of year that you join the association. For example, one location may have multiple associations for you to choose from. So you can pick and choose on where you would want to pay your dues pretty much. And also the time of year because the fee is prorated. So let's say you started um, at renewal time in January. Your fee for the year would be $530, well that's what I had to pay. And if you didn't pay it before January 13th, then it was going to be a $50 late fee. And avoid the late fee. Fee number three, multiple listing service, the MLS. So MLS is pretty much a service for all realtors to host their listings, which provides data about properties that are for sale pretty much. So MLS, you have a quarterly fee. So there's a quarterly fee of $165. You have to pay an e-key fee. So in North Carolina, we use super e-key services or super key services. And pretty much they have an app on your phone and that app connects to your Bluetooth. And when you connect to the Bluetooth, it gives you the ability to access the keys for each home for the houses that you're showing. The year, you're paying a total of $780 to access the houses on MLS as well as having access to the super key services that allows for you to get into the homes. Fee number four, post licensing. So in the state of North Carolina, you're required to have 90 hours of post licensing within 18 months of you being active. So there's three 30 hour courses. So 301, broker responsibility, 302, contracts and closing, and 303, NC law, rules and legal concepts. Now, but you don't have to take it in order. You can take it however you want to, depending on your brokerage though. So for example, with EXP, you have to take your courses within six months, which I highly, highly recommend. I would advise for anyone that is coming in that just got active to go ahead and get your post licensing done because it actually benefits you. So like pre-licensing is like the law and post licensing is actually going to get into the details of what you were going over in pre-licensing. It's very beneficial to help jumpstart your career in real estate. Um, usually that fee is between $200 to $300 and that's per class. Um, I have had a class that was 125 so anywhere between that price range, I'm going to just go ahead and say 300 for all three courses. Number five, so we have what is called continuing education. Your first year, you don't have to pay for continuing education or gen up, but then next year, you're required to pay for continuing education and gen up. Classes are about $50 each. And you also have a renewal fee. So your renewal fee is due every June 30th, and then it it's $45. And if not, you don't pay it by then, there's a late fee of times two. Number six is marketing. Number six is big um, in a sense because that is how you're going to get out there. But some things can't hold off until you actually make money from your first real estate transaction. For starters though, headshots. You want to make sure you have a professional photo and some business cards. Depending on your firm, they may include some of these for you. Calculate in headshots and business cards and I will put that around $200. So I'm not sure what number we're on right now. Signs for listings, the sale sign in the yard. So this is just to help you get potential clients, but that is a fee. So if you want that nice, tall, prestigious signs, either white or black, that post that sits in the yard, that post alone is $100. And then you have to pay for your actual, um, your actual for sale sign. So the for sale sign is separate. Most times it's around $1, so I'm gonna say $60. Um, and then if you need help with designing the 
for sale sign that's another about $25 so for me on my end I went to save the railway um, for sale sign on Canva it looked good it uh, looks like a professional did it because I am that professional and I got it done that way but if not that's around 160 plus about 185 for that one sign so imagine if you have five listings you do that math that math thing for me Speaking of listings, photos for listings, this is key. Now, you may got the iPhone 55, and it's cool, and it's cute, and it gets the job done for your Instagram pictures. But for the pictures that's going on the MLS, hire a professional. Hire a professional photographer that knows the ins and outs, got the light and on bright, the toilet seat is down, there's no shakiness in the camera. Stability. You're going to need photos, maybe videos, measurements. So most times this is in a package. Those fees can run you anywhere between $150 to $450, depending on who you use. But think of it roughly around $150 to $450. It's open houses. So prep for an open house, most times it seems like a lot of busy work. But printing documents, if your firm doesn't allow for you to print for free, you have to pay for that. The flyers to design and print door hangers design and print snacks and drinks so most times you're going to have snacks and drinks i would say roughly around 20 bucks is what you're going to be spending on snacks and drinks and then in regards to open house directional signs so you could get the free ones from lowe's or home depot if you want to brand directional signs it'll be about 10 or 20 dollars per sign for starters you can just go to homes and look <laughs> for starters you can go to lowe's or home depot but if you want to get the branded content and looks oh so fly, it's going to run you about $10 to $20 per sign. Next one is lock boxes. In North Carolina, we use the super boxes, but we also use combo locks. A super box will run you about $100, and then the combos are about $40. Bucks. So, like I said, if you have five listings and you're using Supra, that's about $500. Bucks. You do the math. Last but most definitely not least have a budget for your wardrobe like if you could be an agent that prefer to wear your jeans and your hoodie that's perfectly fine but if you one of the agents that's gonna put that on that's gonna go put that that new easter suit on if you misses put on then have you a budget for your wardrobe too now i'm not saying to go crazy but starting out and until you close your first transaction and you may already have the basics blacks grays whites a couple of blazers a couple of slacks some dress shoes, the basics, whites, blacks, and grays. So to sum this up as a new real estate agent, you should be prepared to drop a couple of bands to start your real estate career. From association dues, MLS, but after closing on one real estate transaction, one commission check should cover all of the fees that was mentioned in the video. That's the pro here. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss another video with me. And I'll see you in the next one.